Welcome back. So my board right at the moment is not lit probably as well as it could be, um, but that's because one of the first things that I want to talk about for this display case is that you need to get um, a sheet of acetate. Okay, this is just called an acetate sheet, and it's gonna be our fake glass. And so I'm gonna to try to keep the glare off of this is the bottom line. Um, then something for your little handle on your case. These are those uh, decorative uh, beads that would go on like, they're, they're made to go on fingernails. You know, when you paint your fingernails, put a little decoration on there. You don't get any decorations from me, I'm afraid. Um, and then this would be eight of your smaller toothpicks, round toothpicks, or do some sanding to make them smaller. Clear glue, something's really gonna stay clear. Uh, whatever paint you want for your trim, uh, and then various other items here that you're going to need for measuring and cutting and, and um, so forth. So what I'm going to have us do is actually start not with the acetate sheet, okay, um, and start with some painting. Uh, so that can be uh, drying while we're cutting the acetate sheet. So what you're going to want to do is kind of check, see if your toothpicks need a little bit of sanding. Um, these bamboo ones, I mean, one thing that's a benefit is I don't find that they need a whole lot of sanding, um, but you're going to want to go ahead and paint all of them. We can cut these later so that you have a place to hold it while you paint. Um, so just that's your first step. Go ahead and do that. The next step we will do will be to cut out the top and the bottom. And I forgot to mention, you'll need some kind of maybe chipboard like this or mat board or something like that to make your top and your bottom of your display case. And that will be painted on both sides as well. Uh, but first, go ahead and take a, a couple minutes and paint your toothpicks. So hopefully those are dry or almost dry. Now we want to go ahead and cut the top and the bottom and paint them. Okay, these are going to be, if you're able to see that, 2.3 by 1.7, and they'll look pretty much like this. This is not dry. Um, and I would go ahead and paint all sides. It gives you options if something goes wrong. You know, if you need to flip it over and use the other side, this is definitely not dry. You need to put that down. Now we're going to do our fake glass, our acetate sheet here. And I have tried really hard to um, make sure that you can see this. Um, and basically what we're going to do first, and I'll give you a tip on how to measure it, is we want to go ahead and cut five centimeters, okay, down here. You know, find yourself a corner or square it. Five centimeters, and then I'm going to go out this way in length seven centimeters, okay? So let's start with that. I'm going to go ahead and pause it so my head's not in the way. When I go to mark this, one other thing, mine has a protective back, all right, it's got the cork, okay? If you don't have that, you may want to place a piece of paper or something over this because depending upon the brand of your acetate sheet, it may or may not have a protective coating. Now, the benefit, of course, is of the uh, protective coating is that you're not going to get little scratches and so forth as easily. However, it's more expensive. So I try to keep the price down and, you know, so mine doesn't have a protective coating. When you go to measure, make your life easier and just use your exacto to sort of punch a little hole and then of course do another one so you can get a nice straight cut. I would not use a Sharpie or something like that because you're going to run the risk that that will show later. So just, you know, just cut this a little bit. Just just make a little um puncture there and then you can measure that out and and it'll work fine. Okay, so I'm gonna pause. Okay, so our next step here is to make this to where we can bend this. And so for the door, we'll make a cut, okay? But for our other measurements, and I'll tell you in a sec, then we will score them and then we can bend this around, 
okay? So I'm looking at this, it looks slightly, it looks like it's not quite square. Uh, so I'll probably go back and I'll fix that. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll actually go this direction because I see something going on there. So here we go. What you want to do is you want to measure over to start with, measure over two centimeters, okay? Make your little puncture. Then using that, I want to go ahead and my next measurement is going to be 1.5, okay? Now I'm altering or um, alternating, so my next measurement will be two. And if I did everything right, then I should wind up with one and a half here on the edge. And thankfully, I did. Okay. So now, obviously, I want to go ahead and and I want to measure over and double check and make sure that I'm cutting evenly. Um, but for the interest of, in the interest of time, I'm going to explain something here. This first cut is actually going to be the door. Well, this first measurement, I should say it that way. I don't want to confuse you and me. So this first one is actually going to be cut all the way through. It will become the door, and if I cut it all the way through, then the door I can just make sort of like um, glue hinges, if you will, and it will open and close better. Now, of course, if you're not really concerned about it, you know, opening and closing easily, then you could actually just score for each of these, and... Um, you don't have to cut the door off of there. Okay, so I'm gonna pause, do that, and then we're gonna fold it and start to, to uh, the next steps. Get that out of the way. And, and simply fold. And make a nice crisp using your fingernails or something, and make a nice crisp um, bend, even if you need to go back and forth slightly. We don't really want um, this to, to, you know, come off. If it does, it's not a big deal. You can always put glue along there and put it together, and there's going to be the trim on it, and so it'll cover up a mistake. Um, so both sides, once you get this nice and crisp here, both sides are done, and the back is done, okay? The door is separate. We'll deal with that later. So the next thing that we can do is we can go ahead and do the shelves. And it's slightly easier to do it in this order, but the shelves are a little challenging kind of no matter what. The shelves are, um, I gotta bring that darn sheet back here, hopefully you can see. So the shelves will, you'll need three, Okay, you'll need three shelves, and those are two centimeters, okay, because you see what's happening here, right? That's the width of that shelf, so that should fit nicely in there. So that'll be your two centimeters, and then the shelves, though, are not as deep as this. And the reason I did that is just so that the door will stay closed. And if you make any mistakes with the shelves, it won't be as obvious. Um, and, and so I did those at 1.4. If you are um, really good at making these three shelves, you know, precisely, you know, that you've, you've worked with this before, you could um, add another millimeter or so on that and it would be fine. And it's also if you're worried about this, but see, there'll be trim on this. Um, so long story short, three shelves, okay, two centimeters by 1.4, three shelves, sorry, three shelves, okay? I have my, my three shelves 
So take this and go ahead and open it back out again. Make sure that you did have a nice fold though, because we, what we're gonna do is we're going to measure for our shelves, placement of the shelves, and we'll make our little punctures or whatever in the crease. And then when we go to put our shelves in there, we're going to need to have that nice crease. So if you did it, if you skip that step, you are going to need to do it. But for right now, let's open this back out again. And so your measurements, this was um, five, okay? This was five centimeters, what will be tall. And so I'm going to measure and I'm gonna make a little mark over here and on the other side for 2.5. And then, of course, um, half of 2.5 is like 1.25. Well, if you can see well enough to do 1.25, you know, on, on either side, great. If you wanna eyeball it, if you wanna make an extra shell for, or what have you, you make your decisions there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark, and then I'll probably do more like 1.2 on either, either side here, okay? So let's do that. Now that I made my marks in here, which I could have made a little smaller, I wanna go ahead and get that nice crease back again. And the course of the more I do this, it's a slightly easier job. So, okay, I'll square that off as much as I can. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shelves and I want to use as little glue as possible. So what I did is I did it just on the corners. Gosh, okay, hopefully you can see that. I did just a dab on the corners because in real life, that's where it would be attached anyway. And so if it shows, then it's not particularly bad. So I'll slightly open this up. And what I'm doing is I'm just gonna place this in here using my guides. Okay, this is a little fiddly as you can see. But that's what I'm doing. Hopefully it's all nice and even. If I ac accidentally, if you accidentally get some glue where you don't want it, I'm gonna show you what to do about that. But meanwhile, let's go ahead and do the front as well. If you're really struggling with it, you could do more glue, like along the sides. What my job here is to try to make it even and hold that in place. See, the best I can. Mistakes can be c covered up a little bit. So I'm going to do that. I, I just happened to start in the middle. I think it's easier. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and do that again for the other two shelves. I'm gonna get those in there. And it's slightly easier, like I said, than doing the steps in a different order. So I will hold those until they're dry. Make sure they're on there real well. For this section, I needed to re-record because I made a mistake. I This is actually part of my prototype, so you can see it's much more of a mess than the first one. But I actually want to show you something. It doesn't need to be this high of an alcohol content, but you can actually use a little bit of rubbing alcohol if you chose the right kind of glue. If you chose a glue that can be removed nicely with rubbing alcohol, all you have to do is go in here with a Q-tip and soften this up. And it may take a little bit of you know rubbing to soften this up a bit. And then take the dry side, and you may need to change Q-tips a few times. But you might notice that all that glue that was right in there is gone now. Now, I have to be careful because, see, 
if I use too much, then I'm going to have to re-glue and start my little process over again, which is not that big of a deal, you know, unless you're <laughs> unless you're almost finished and then you're going to get salty about that. Um, but be careful about that. That glue's actually on the back. Um, I, for my other one, you know, I went and did that. I cleaned it up uh, quite a bit before I was going to photograph it. So at any rate, that's a little a little tool. If you find that it gets a little cloudy or something, just use some water then and it'll get rid of the cloudiness and just use once again that dry side of the Q-tip and, and you can clean that up. So part of what was a mess here is this door, but I'm not going to worry about really making this door pretty. All I want to do is show you how you apply your door or install your door. And that is just with a little bit of glue, maybe here at the top. It's nice to do it right along here because it's not going to show probably. And then you're, you're just going to go ahead and, and place this on here. And make sure it doesn't stick out too much one way or another. And that, you know, that's all nice and aligned. And as it dries, you may want to open and close it to kind of make sure that everything went well. Like I can move that down a little bit. But when it's dry, you'll have a door that can open and close pretty easily, even though we're going to place these right on the edge here in a minute. Okay, so I, it'll open and close easier that way. All right, so that's one thing I wanted to show you. Then the other thing that I just wanted to tell you about is you already have your toothpicks um, painted, you know, but you held on to it and so it's not completely painted. That's not a big deal. We will have to do a little touching up with paint um, in, in, in a couple of different steps. But what you want to do is you want to take your, your um, toothpick and um, I'm just going to go ahead and use this even though it's been cut. And you need to cut this right at five centimeters. Now, in my actual one that I did on camera, I was a little shorter than five centimeters and it caused me some problems. In, in essence, what you're doing is just clipping off the point, okay? You're, you're just getting this, it's, it'll, uh, an average toothpick um, is just really, it's gonna be like right here, like right as that tip starts to taper quite a bit. So you're going to do that for just four of these, and it'll become that trim on the sides, okay? The metal, in real life it was metal. And then with the other four, you're going to measure over one and a half centimeters. And what that will become, of course, would be your legs. Now, we're not ready to put the top and the bottom on yet. That's in my next section. Um, but they will go down here in alignment with this. But because toothpicks aren't uh, so long, then we have to make this a separate piece and it goes underneath um, instead of just going all the way down. So toothpicks have some limitations, but let's face it, we can make almost everything we want in half scale with the toothpick involved somewhere in the in the deal okay so i think that covers everything that i had screwed up earlier and the next section should pick up from there just fine now we're ready to go ahead and put the trim on here and she'll just use a little bit of glue and we're going to go ahead and apply it sort of to the corners in other words um try to keep it from just sticking to the back or just sticking to the front but right on that edge, if at all possible, because what it'll do is it'll kind of cover up some of your mistakes, if you made any, and it just, I, I think that, that it looks a little bit better. Um, okay, and so then, of course, after that, 
we're going to put on the bottoms. Now, something that I didn't mention earlier that I should have is if you choose to light this, then go ahead before you put the top on here in a minute, uh, go ahead and glue a, a light or lights, however many you want, to the top or well, what would be the underneath of the top. And then what I want to do is uh, when I, I glue this is I want to glue it sort of like this. In other words, bring it to the corner because then if I have it in the corner and I really want, if I'm going to hold it this way, then I need to bring it here. What I want to do then, if this is my back, I will be able to run this down the back of the leg and then paint it black and it won't show. So if you're planning on lighting it, then you can go ahead and put your little drop of glue or drops of glue if you're going to do more than one light. And a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and do that too. And um, let me see here. If I want this to be the front, I'm doing it the wrong way. I want my glue to be here. I can do like that too. Why not? Make sure you glue with the light bulb or whatever you want to call that on top and not accidentally turn it over. And I'm just going to go ahead and let this dry while I do other things. So if you're going to light that then go ahead and take advantage of this time to, to glue that down. So what I'm going to do here, like I said, is just put a little bit of glue and I'm going to attach these and then I'll be right back. Time for the bottom. So just go ahead, put some glue on the ends of your toothpicks. My toothpicks, I noticed, were a little bit short, but it's not really going to be obvious once you get the bottom and the top on there. But it's not optimal. <laughs> it's not optimal that they were a little bit short. So that that kind of thing I would keep in mind in the future if I made this again. So I have my bottom and some adjustments need to be made here to straighten this on here. Best case scenario, if it's all squared, then this should, it should go on with the toothpicks in the corner. I still got, I've still got some issues here that I'll fix. I think it has to do with the way that I glued this one toothpick on right here. It's not squaring up. But at any rate, I can fix that. The next thing you can do is you can, um, in fact, I may need, I may really need to make some adjustments here. It looks like to pull those down. Okay, well, the next step that I would suggest is to go ahead and put your legs on here and you can just align them with the other toothpicks so that it goes straight down and that is fine. The last step well, no, not quite the last step, but the next step would be to put this top on here. And I will come back 
and do that here in a minute. So I put the top and the bottom on and when I did that, some things, you know, are not perfect. The shelves, a couple of them got wonky. Um, the legs are not quite dry. I will go through here and I will touch up with paint. I will use my rubbing alcohol to remove a bunch of th uh, stuff. I, I want to paint that wire uh, in the back, even though it probably won't show. Um, and then I was talking about you can put a little handle using these little beads and I'm just going to put it right there in that middle shelf area and I think that is a good placement for it. I think that will work. So I'm going to do all my touching up and so forth and then um, I will show you the final project. Um, if you don't stay with me, um, please subscribe. I could make adjustments all day long, but I think I cleaned up most of the glue and so forth. So I'm going to, well, you see I put the light on in here. I'm going to actually display in my miniature display case some miniature houses, of course. So I'm going to put these in here. Um, and then I also, I purchased this adorable um, vase that someone made um, for the Chicago show and um, I will probably put that on the bottom here. These uh, you can make yourself. Um, I just took some beads and then some more of those little um, oh, spheres, little balls that go on your fingernails and I made kind of some perfume bottles and this is a just a regular silver bead and that can be like another vase. So basically you've got this, you can always just tuck this kind of in if the door isn't, isn't closing. I'll see if I can get this to show how it'll look. It shows somewhat how it looks when it's all, when it's dark and it's all lit up. So I hope you had fun and please subscribe.